G'day everyone, my name is Hoi and in this video I'm going to show you how to mask out intricate objects using a method that you probably haven't used before. But don't worry, it's easy. I'm going to show you step by step. I'm going to be using this image, so if you want to follow along, the link to the image is in the description. Okay, so before we mask out this image and specifically the cranes, let's just remind ourselves what the fundamental of masking is. In a mask, what we want to do is change the areas that we want to show in white and the areas that we don't want to show in black. The name of this game is to use adjustment layers to turn this image into black and white. The first step is to create a black and white adjustment layer. So let's go to our adjustment layer icon here and let's select black and white. Now the reason why I've used the black and white adjustment layer instead of desaturating it is because I want to use these sliders here. Let me just make a little bit more room here. What I want to do is select the, out the crane here. And the crane, if I just turn this off, is in red and even though the uh, crane on this side is a little bit darker, it's still in red. So what I want to do is to change this either into black or white. And based on my experimentation using this adjustment layer method is to turn black the objects that you want to select and then invert it later. So that's what we're going to do. So let's turn on our black and white layer back on. And the name of the game is just to turn this into black. So with the red slider, I'm going to turn it to the left or slide it to the left, but I don't want to go all the way to the left. And I'll show you the reason why a little bit later. So something like this. And then with this slider, I'm just going to play around with it. The best way I found is just to play around with the sliders, exaggerate the movement so you can see the areas that are going to be impacted. Now, most of the yellow is in the background, so we'll turn the background into white. So I'm going to push this all the way to the right. And then let's do the same with the greens. Now, there's not a lot of greens, but whatever there is of green, it's in the background. So let's change that to uh, 300 all the way to the right so it's bright and then with the cyans let's do the same thing so turn it to the right slide it to the right i'm not sure why i keep saying turn it to the right but slide it to the right and then the blue uh, let's change it to the right as well let's slide it to the right and then with the magentas let's do the same thing so it's barely got a uh, difference here. So I'm just going to dial that up all the way to the right. Now let's go back to uh, the reds and explain why I didn't go all the way to the left. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and just crank it up all the way there. You can see that it will introduce a little bit of artifacts. Just um, take note of say for this area here. If I bump it up all the way to the left and make it pure black, it will exaggerate it. So I don't want the artifacts. So I'm just going to dial that back out. And the beauty of these sliders is that once we add more adjustment layers, I can go back to the black and white layer and then just dial up or down depending on the effect or the impact other adjustment layers will have on this. So I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. And obviously here is uh, not the end product. It is one step uh, closer to what we want. Now the next step is to crush the blacks and make the whites even whiter. So we're going to use another adjustment layer. And this time we're going to use the levels adjustment layer. In the histogram here, there's a lot of white here and then not a lot of midtones or the shadows here. So what we're going to do is click on the uh, highlight slider and then just turn it or slide it. I keep saying turning. I don't know why. Uh, but slide it to the left. And again, if you exaggerate it, the lines on the crane or the structure on the crane will start to disappear. So it's a balance between how much you slide backwards and forward and what you want to retain or remove. So something like this looks okay to me. And what I'm looking at is, is it retaining 
the intricate details. And at this point here, I can simply remove it using the brush tool, using the dodge and burn tool, etc. So long as the majority of what I want selected is captured, that's good for me. So let's use the mid-tone slider here and ask ourselves the same thing. So something like this looks good. And I don't think we're going to change or use the black slider because it introduces more artifacts. So if I zoom in a little bit and then just play around with it, you can see, for example, here, it's going to introduce more artifacts. So I'm just going to dial that back to zero. Let's zoom out, Command or Control zero. So this isn't done yet. I'm going to introduce another layer, and this is the selective color. So let's go to adjustment layer icon here, go to selective color. And what we want to do is use these whites, neutrals, and blacks, and basically the highlights, midtones, and then the shadows. So let's start off with the whites. And the only slider I'm going to change is the black slider here. And I've got this on absolute. Now absolute would simply make the effect more pronounced compared to relative. Now let's play around with the whites. Now something like this. Now you don't want it to go too far, otherwise it will make the details a bit crunchy. It's not as smooth as what we want. So something like this, uh, minus 28 would do. And then let's go to our neutrals and then play around with that again, exaggerate it back and forth to see the impact it's having, and then just slow it down a little bit when you have it in the range that you want. So something like plus eight maybe, and then go to the blacks. I think the blacks will just uh, leave it as it is, so yep. So let's reset that and just double click on it and that will reset it back to zero. So now that we've got our image to the best that we can in black and white, we're going to make a mask out of this. Yes, the mask won't be perfect because you can see here that there is still a little bit of ghosting of the background image here, but we'll fix that later. So for the time being, I'm just going to make a mask out of our black and white image. Before I do, I'm just going to be neat and tidy and just group all these uh, what I call check layers into one folder. So let's click on this, shift click the bottom layer and then just press Command or Control G to make a group and then just rename that to check layers. Now to make a mask out of this, there's a keyboard shortcut way and then a little bit longer way. So I'm going to show you both. So let's click on the background layer and press Command Option 2, that's Control Alt 2 if you're on a PC, and that will load this selection here. Once you've got that loaded, you can press the mask icon and then invert that by pressing Command or Control I. Let's just delete that and show you the alternative way. So the alternative way is going to your Channels panel here. If you don't have your Channels panel, if you don't see your Channels panel, go to Window and just make sure that Channels is selected. Now you can see that on the side here, it's got Command 2, Command 3, etc, etc. If you're on a PC, it will show Control 2, Control 3, etc. Now to select or to make a selection out of each of these channels. Now, it doesn't matter which channel you select because it's black and white and therefore they're all the same. You can press Command or Control and then click on that and then that will make the selection. All I've done by using the Command Option 2 or Control Alt 2 is simply use the keyboard shortcut to make the selection. Now, if you only press Command 2 or Command 3, it will simply just go to that layer. It doesn't make a selection. So if I do that by pressing Command 3, it will go to the red layer or the red channel, I should say. Command 4, it will go to the green layer and so forth. To actually select, make a selection out of, for example, the red channel, I have to press Command Option 3, and that's Control Alt 3 if you're on a PC. Let's click on RGB to return it back to normal. Let's go back to our layers and then make a mask out of that. And then again, let's invert that by pressing Command or Control I. I'm going to turn off my check layer and then just make a solid color just so we can see 
how good or not good our mask is. So you can see that the mask isn't perfect. If I just zoom in a little bit here, you can see that the uh, structure, some of the structure is not selected properly and then there's some artifacts here. I find that with this method, it gives us a better base than, for example, uh, using the color range selection technique or the object selection. Now, obviously, if you use the pen to cut this out and take hours to cut it out individually, then obviously you'll have a better result than this. But this is just the beginning. We need to clean this up. To clean this up, let's enter into the mask mode by going to our mask here and then pressing Option or Alt and then just clicking once on the mask layer here. You can see that some areas are OK and some areas are in grey. And so what we want to do is turn areas into black where we don't want to show and then areas into white where we want to show. There shouldn't be any mid-tones or greys there because that will signify that there's some level of transparency here. Now there are a number of ways as with Photoshop there's multiple ways of doing that. What I'm going to do is use the dodge and burn tool and I'll tell you why a little bit later. Let's click on this hold there and then go to our dodge tool here. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here and what I want to do is paint in areas that I want to show. So dodging is to make lights even brighter and what I've got selected here is highlights and my exposure all the way up to 100%. The exposure simply means the strength of your brush. I'm just going to dial that down maybe to 40 and I'm just going to paint over the areas I want to show. Now I won't do everything on screen. I'll just show you some of the techniques that you can use to fix up your mask. So once you've colored in the areas that you want to show, there might be areas that you want to hide. For example, here, if you remember here, there was a building in the background. Remember the dodge tool makes things brighter. So what we have to do is change it to our burn tool. And in our burn tool, I want to select my shadows and my exposure around about, you know, 15 maybe. And then I can resize my brush. I can hit my left bracket key to make it smaller or the right bracket key to make it bigger. And then I can just simply erase that out. Now, the reason why I'm using this is because when I get to the light areas, I don't want my brush to ruin what's already been selected in white. And that's why I'm not using the normal brush and then just using black as my background because if I do that, then if I'm not careful with my strokes, it will simply rub out or remove the selection that I've already made. So using the burn tool, it's more discriminate. When I go over the white areas, it doesn't remove as much of the white areas as the normal brush tool. Now I say it doesn't remove as much because it really depends on your exposure or your strength of your dodge or burn tool. So here I've got it relatively low at 15%. If you need it even lower or higher, obviously you can adjust this. So uh, you can do that until it's all removed. So here you see it's really good for these intricate areas. And if you spend the time to mask all this out, you have a very nice selection. Now, as I mentioned, the reason why I use the dodge and burn tool is because I do have the option of selecting what I want to impact the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and then the strength of that. An alternative approach is also to use your brush tool, but on your brush tool, change your blend mode from normal to something like overlay or soft light. I'm going to use overlay and then just dial the strength back down using the flow or the opacity, something really low, uh, maybe down to 13%, and then just reduce the size of the brush again. And then that could also work as well. Now, this method, you really got to know how much of your flow or your opacity to reduce it down to. With the dodge and burn tool, it's a little bit simpler as it just gives you the highlights, midtones or shadows. 
Now I'm going to show you one more masking technique to help you perfect your mask. And then I'm going to show you my efforts using this image here, which I've already cut out. So the other method is masking out straight lines. You can see that there is a straight line here and it's really hard if you're using a pen or a mouse to get that straight line with your brush. So what you can do is using a brush tool, I'm going to switch it to my brush tool B on my keyboard and I'm just going to resize that down to about two pixels maybe. I could have just simply selected here and just typed it there. What I want to do is make this straight line show. So remember, white reveals, black conceals. So black is my foreground color. White is my background color. I'm going to switch it by pressing this a double arrow here, or I could have pressed X on my keyboard. I'm just going to press once on my mouse here. Well, before I do that, let's make our brush a little bit bigger. I was going to say smaller, but I meant to say bigger. So maybe three pixels, press uh, return. Basically, I want the size of my brush to be the size of the line here. So click once on my mouse, go to the area where I want the end of my selection to be, and then press shift on my keyboard, and then click on my mouse, and that will make a straight line from here all the way down here. So let's do it again here and then click here. Now it's not working because I haven't set my flow back up to 100. So let's try that again. So let's click once here and click once here. You can see that it's made a, a straight line all the way from the first point to the last point. So please take the time out to work on any imperfections there. I'm going to switch to the file that I've already made and this is what I've already made. So I've spent the time to master it out using the techniques that I've just shown you. I'm just going to turn off the gradient layer here and then uh, just enter into the mask mode. You can see that there are perfectly straight lines here and then the blacks are black and the whites are white. So the last step that I'm going to do is just to show you how to create a gradient background. Now it's very straightforward, so I'm just going to remove this, click drag it to the uh, trash can. I'm going to press G on my keyboard and that will bring up the gradient tool. And what I have selected is the clouds option here. So if you haven't got it, I click on the cloud option and we're going to use this one here and I'm going to click on this radial option here. And what we're going to do is somewhere around the middle of your canvas, click and drag this out and something like this. And once I'm okay with it, I'm gonna click and drag it back down so it's behind the layer. So let's show you the before and after. So this is without the mask and this is with the mask. And that's how you mask out intricate objects using a method that you probably haven't used before, and that's using adjustment layers. Now, if you learn something new, it will help me out so much if you can like, subscribe, comment, or hit the bell icon so you can get notified for when my next video is out.